Hello and welcome to another episode of Motors for the Masses and today we are not on the NTV. Why is that? Because the tank has gone off to be resprayed and I'm having a little bit of a break. However, I am bringing you something that's NTV related, or this particular bike related anyway. I hope you like it. If you don't, sorry. If you do, brilliant. So without any further ado, let's roll the intro and get cracking. So before I start, I want to talk to you a little bit about the theme that I'm going for. Now, it's a bit Mad Max meets Assassin's Creed. Um, I don't like to follow trends, but I like to sort of steal ideas from here and there and make one thing differently. So we've got uh, a bit of Mad Max and a bit of Assassin's Creed um, mixed with old dirty biker sort of thing. So let's start with the helmet. Now, before I show you the helmet at its current state, um, I'm going to put in some pictures of the process along the way from the start of the helmet, what we've done to it and what it's like now. And here it is. <laughs> so this is the mask from um, Mad Max Fury Road for Immortan Joe. So he was wearing this mask. Um, he had hoses on that and this came with hoses down the side. But it's going to be a bit awkward and probably have them flapping around. And if I need to take the mask off, it's just going to be a bit cumbersome. So instead of the hoses, um, we've now got a 3D printer. So Jamie has printed out these little filters and we've glued them on the end. I've added some touches here and there with some painting highlights and this chin was a bit white, so I've painted that sort of alloy looking and added some rust detail to here and some um, copper sort of screw heads, um, just little touches on here just to make it more realistic and not so plastic looking. But I think that's come out really well. We had to trim it down because it was all the way back here and it was stuck out sort of this far. It just looked a bit stupid. So to make it as close to my face as possible without touching and so I can get the helmet on with this in situ, this is where we ended up. And I think it's come out pretty well. Very pleased with it. Chris, thank you very much, uh, did all the trimming and made it fit nicely and uh, Jamie printed out these and then I did the painting. Um, so yes, I'm really pleased. We've also got some um, interceptor badges from uh, the Mad Max interceptor and I just distressed them a little bit by scuffing them up with a scouring pad and just added a couple of horns on there. And I've also got some of these, some plastic cosplay style rounds or bullets. Um, I'm going to cut out a section of five of those and use a hot gun and glue them to the side and just paint the little finishing touches on those. I've also got a scouring pad and what we're going to do now is just scuff this up a bit more. Now being a polycarbonate helmet, you can't really do too much damage to it unless you get all the paint off and go down to the plastic. So I'm just going to scuff it up, scratch it a bit, make it look a bit weathered and a bit old looking. And I'm also, I think, going to colour in these with a black pen because the moto doesn't really go very well does it oh yeah I had to cut up a perfectly good pair of uh, 19 pound motocross goggles because I wanted that with the uh, rubberized sticky bit on the back so it doesn't come off the things you do eh so using a scourer and a bit of 600 grit sandpaper, I'm just going to scuff over it and see what it comes out like. Just scuffs here and there, it doesn't have to be uh, 
uniform, just quite scruffy looking, just to give it that look. Of course, safety is important. So the first thing I did was bought myself this Sparta jacket. Now, it doesn't come with a back plate, so I put a back plate in it, but it does come with these shoulder pads and the elbow pads and leather arms, which is important, and I'll get onto that in a minute. Ignore that bit, can't see that yet. So, safety, tick. And then I got myself an Assassin's Creed coat. Now, I only paid 60 pounds for it. In fact, it's this one here. But there was an issue. In fact, there was a couple. In fact, there was a few issues. One of them being was that most of it's leather, but the rest is sort of leatherette style, so I've got to be careful what I do with it. The other is the Assassin's Creed coat comes sort of down to a point at the front and the back, whereas this one was just sort of like that, sort of flasher Mac style. Um, it had the hood, so I ripped that off because obviously on a bike that was just going to probably flap around and act like a sail. So I got rid of that. Um, I took the belt off because that's no good. It's pointless and it looks again like some old guy has tied himself up around the middle. Um, and then I got out my special sewing skills. I cut the coat and made a point out of it like I did here. In fact, let me just show you the process of the pictures that I've done so far and then we'll come on to what it looks like now. Here, here it is. Yes, it's armless, <laughs> Stroke sleeveless. So, at first I put it on, I thought, oh, it's a bit tight around the arms. My forearms are a bit tight on there and I can't really move, let alone ride a bike properly. And then I thought, hang on a minute, the spider jacket's got leather arms. So I'll just cut these arms off Problem solved. So there you go. So it's now very light, which is also a bonus. There you go. Like so. Um, you see the point there I did at the front, as opposed to the non-point on this one. I have cut it already. I just need to sew this side, so I'll be doing that in a minute. And of course, sewed on my uh, MPF badge, the Main Force Patrol, MFP, sorry. Main Force Patrol, which is the Australian uh, police force type people. Um, the hood is gone. Um, I was going to put, now I bought some Viking style leather shoulder pads and I was going to stitch them on here, but I don't think I need them because I've got these ones on here already, like so. So I don't think I need to put them on, but we'll think about that later. I'll show you it now with the jacket in place as well. The only thing I did do is I cut off the cuffs, like so, off the uh, other jacket and sewed them onto these because it had this style, like that, elastic, and it didn't look right. So, cut those off and sewed them on there, and then with that on, it sort of works, you know? Obviously I won't be wearing a hoodie under it because it'll just be too much. But there you go, like so. But it's not just staying like this. It's time to make it look old because it just looks too new, not very Mad Max-like. Now the fun begins. Now, I'll warn you, you are about to get very distressed. I don't want to upset you, but things could get very messy. Now, as I said before, I don't know how good this leather et is. So, this seems pretty strong. This, I don't know. 
So rather than um, douse it in acetone like a lot of people are suggesting or um, alcohol rubbing agent, um, I'm just going to use again the sandpaper and the scouring pad and then we're going to do some dragging. <laughs> That's a lot more fun than it sounds. Um, again, the easiest thing to do is just the edges, things that are going to weather quite well. So we're going to distress the edges, probably better with sandpaper because it's a bit more abrasive. Just all over the edges, just to get rid of some of that shine all over it. Dull down the leather and make it look a bit old looking. And then what we're going to do is tie it to the back of the truck and drag it around the car park, through some dirt, across some stones. Um, some of you might want to see me wearing the jacket whilst that happens. And I'll be honest, I did think about it because I thought, make for a good video, but I'm not so sure. I think that might be a bit too much and possibly a little bit dangerous. So I've decided against it. <laughs> Yeah, you see, now, I haven't done that very much and it's starting to rip this leatherette, whereas on this side, it's a lot more abrasive and open to abuse. So that's the reason why I don't want to do it too much, because I don't want to rip it off. Um, so the black needs slightly less abuse than the brown. Uh, now, when I drag it, they do suggest to put some weight in it. But again, if I do that, I might not end up with a back or a front left on this jacket. Mind you, the back's all right, because it's that brown leather, so maybe we will, we'll see. The important thing to do if you are doing this is along the seams and anywhere where it would usually wear and weather if you're in a sand-ridden apocalypse. Yeah, you see, that's tearing that, and I'm not doing that very much at all, so I've got to be very careful. I might have to use the scourer on this and the sandpaper on the brown, or just be more gentle. This is very soft. So for now, here it is. Um, it's not finished, of course. I've still got to finish this side, um, but the distressing is not too bad. And I'm quite pleased with how it turns out. So this is what it's going to look like when I'm on the NTV. So there we go. Yes. Distressed, 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 distressed. Mostly tired. As a close-up, there's the jacket, the gloves, the sleeves, the back. 
the helmet and the glasses. I'm quite pleased with how that turns out. There we go. Ah! This should scare a few children at the uh, traffic lights. Superb! Ah! Rock and roll and all that gubbins. And that brings us to the end of this uh, very different episode of Motors for the Masses. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it something different. We'll be back next time with more on the NTV and, of course, lots of other stuff as well. So, until next time, please ride and drive carefully and go and scare the crap out of some people. No, don't do that. Be nice. And um, etc. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.